Hey there, welcome to my very, very, very noisy grow room today. Um, today we're going to be doing an experiment. <laughs> Are you okay? Can I set you down now? Okay, so in today's video, what I'm going to share with you is an experiment. Thankfully that finally shut off. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be, well, as you can see, I'm growing lettuce in my grow tower garden, but I wanna try I'm um, taking some of my seedlings that I have growing in rock wool and I want to plant them in soil just to see if I can get them to grow and what varieties work the best. So I have three things. I have a gourmet blend um, lettuce planted. This stuff, it's actually the stuff that I'm using. It come from West Coast season. It's actually doing really well in the tower garden. It's just slow compared to the rock star of all rock star lettuce that is that I'm growing, which is called Fast and Furious Blend, which is also from West Coast Seeds. Um, but this blend here is my tried and true garden variety that I like to grow for leaf lettuce. And it was also the same variety that comes years and years ago when I got this tower, it came with that exact specific blend. But I, I'm gonna try different things. I'm also growing some uh, pak choy as an experiment. I'm not sure the variety of it. I just kind of had random seeds left over from last year all mixed together. And I'm assuming they're pak choy, like a bok choy kind of thing, just a compact version of it. I thought it would be fun to try. So I'm gonna show you what I'm doing and I'll turn the camera around and I'll show you what I got going on here. But uh, first, I'm, I have, well, I have some potting or regular, <laughs> I just have some regular growing medium in just a cell tray and it's well moistened and I have worm castings that I will be applying in this as well.
those are now getting ready to germinate and we'll see what happens with that. I have some tulips that are going here and I thought while I am kind of have about half an hour before I have to go do chores and start dinner that I would do some samples. One of the things that I'm doing is I'm learning about incubating microbiome and uh, so I can heal my soil. Instead of using compost, I'm using um, aquatics. Now I'm going to go get a sample out of my aquarium and we'll look at it under the microscope and see what kind of microbes we have going. While I've been on this regenerative egg journey, learning and researching, I learned a lot about worm castings. And worm castings is a very beneficial um, amendment for your soil, something that has a lot of benefits. But the, the main reason you want to use worm castings is because of the life and the microbes that are alive in the castings themselves. So I bought these castings and I wanted to see what kind of microbes were in the samples from this bag. And I found very minimal life. I found very little living organisms in this particular bag of soil. Now it could be because it's old, um, but just consider that to buy your worm castings and amendments from some place that you can trust that is doing soil testing. Otherwise, you're wasting your money. 
Now I had this, uh, this particular castings for a while and it shipped when it was really, really cold. And I don't know how old this bag is. So it could have been just that they died off, but I do know that I didn't find a lot of biodiversity in the sample. What I did find is a lot of one type of bacteria, which is, I'm not sure I'm still learning myself, but I just found it to be very interesting. So I find that's really fascinating that when you buy bag soil that there's really not a lot of living organisms in there when um you know I've I've learned a lot about gardening and the last few years and I've learned that um in order for our plants to actually absorb nutrients and to get everything out of the soil that it needs it needs living organisms to uh coexist and um so it's a real eye opener for me to uh, learn this to actually have a microscope and look at soil samples directly um, from the bag as i'm buying them as amendments and realizing that yes there's lots of nutrients but my plants can't uptake it and so you know there's a there's a gap in there someplace so i'm learning quite a bit um, I don't know a lot about this stuff yet. I'm just, I'm just learning. I'm still new to it, but I just thought it was fascinating and I hope you do too. Um, so like I was saying before, I'm learning about regenerative agriculture. Um, I'm just studying it. It's something pretty new here in Canada. It's not a common practice here. There's not a lot of knowledge or wisdom out yet about regenerative practices when you're using soil micro microbiology to grow um, plants to establish healthy uh, food web to establish health healthy plants and healthy immunity and pest pest control um, there's not a lot of information for home gardeners either there's a lot of products there's a lot of things on the shelf that cost a lot of money and um, I'm learning that we don't need to spend a lot of money to to grow a good garden we just need to add life to it and so um you know it's easier for me to use uh, an aquarium to cultivate and cycle uh, nitrates and to be able to use those um, microbes that are um, functioning in the in the substrate to then um, take small little harvests of that and then incubate those for larger volumes on my on my soil what i'm hoping to accomplish is i'm hoping to be able to start a lot of my seedlings inside my grow room here and what i'm hoping to do is weekly harvest some of the nitrates from and and the microbes from the a substrate of my aquarium and then use that diluted um, concentrate from from my substrate to then use on my seedlings and my seedlings will then be uh, introduced to the microbiology once my seedlings are introduced with the microbiology that I'm pulling from my substrate of the nitrogen and the nitrogen cycle from my aquarium i'm able to add that into my seedling soil and and begin that process with the seedling roots where it's able to um, basically begin creating those relationships with life that and that and those microbes that we need in our soil and our our plants need in the root systems and i'm hoping to be able to take that and plant that in my soil and then that will begin to grow um, instead of taking you know hundreds and hundreds of gallons and hundreds of liters of uh, fish concentrate and broadcasting that on my soil for it to leach out or to not actually function. I'm creating a small system on my grow shelves and allowing that to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. And as I plant those out, those microbes can then multiply and um, colonize naturally. And that's basically, it's, it's really tiny little things that I'm trying to do and accomplish. And um, without, it doesn't cost me a lot of money. It costs me a few hours a week to actually do this um, for my whole farm and homestead garden. So I'm hoping that it's something that 
um, is sustainable for me to do moving forward. I hope I can learn a lot about whether this works or not. So far it's been working on some of the stuff I've been growing. I've noticed that they're thriving without having to use a lot of chemicals or product. I'm just winging it, so I don't know. I don't know for sure. It's just trial and error. Um, so to this week I did some planting. I did start some of my seedlings in soil blocks. I am using soil blocks again, trying to limit space and such. So I thought I would share that with you. Um, I did do some bulbs. I'm planting some tulip bulbs to have growing. They're actually growing um, there. They just started this week. There's a whole bunch of seedlings I'm going to be getting started this week as well. Just starting to kind of get into the swing of things. I know um, my my intuition is saying it's a little early to start some of it so i'm going to give it a few days um just because i feel like you know i want to i want to get my window right so i don't have a bunch of seedlings on the shelves a week longer because i don't want leggy plants this spring so i'm just kind of taking it easy and going with the flow um, i'm not sticking to a very strict planting schedule um and i'm just just picking at it away, picking away at it here and there. Um, I'm next week will be full on swing of getting lots planted that will be planted into the greenhouse in six to eight weeks. So anything that's six to eight or ten to six weeks, um, it's getting done. So the furnace goes on in the greenhouse in six weeks from today, and I think it's from today, and then. Um, the seedlings that'll be going will be going in the ground. Um, so seven weeks to 10 weeks. So I need to get a hustle on it. My Lysianthus seeds did not ship to me, but I do have Lysianthus growing. So those will be going out as soon as I get them, which will be in the beginning of March. But I do need to get give the greenhouse some time to thaw the ground, which will probably take about a week. So as soon as I ground, I can get something in there. I'm going to be planting seeds in there and uh, planting some of these seedlings that I got going. So I have six weeks to start seeds. Um, my 10 week window for a lot of things, I just kind of let that lapse a bit. The eucalyptus I do have started, but anything tomorrow, anything that's 10 weeks, um, 10 weeks before the last frost date, I'm going to be planting or starting simply because I will be putting them in the greenhouse or anything that I'm intending to put into the greenhouse, I should say. So yeah, it's just been, the flower farm is busy. Um, just kinda, it's spring, <laughs> it's spring and uh, stuff like that, so.
anyways, I hope you enjoyed to enjoy. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope that it was inspiring in some way and uh, I hope to see you again. We'll catch you next time. Bye for now. Much love. Doing. Happy boy.